Hello, everyone. It is July 23rd, 2020, another episode of the After Chat right down here in After's Alley. I'm your host, Bill After, as you can see. Just in case I forget, I always have my, uh, my name up there. I want to welcome someone who uh, hasn't been seen around the wrestling business for a while because he's been doing so much, so many great things. It's been keeping him so busy both in business and his personal life. I always call him Tricky Nicky. But Nick Burke, welcome down to Aptor's Alley, virtually, of course. Thank you for having me. Yes, we don't want to spread COVID, so we have to no, stay away from each other. How are you, how are you uh, handling this COVID thing? Because in my lifetime, in your lifetime, nothing like this has ever happened. Kicking and screaming. I hate every single bit of it. I don't like having to put the mask on every time I go out to place, but I, but I do it, but I do it kicking and screaming. It's like, I can't wait to get in and out. And it kind of stinks because now I can't go to like a mall and shop around because I don't want to have the mask on. So I, I, I'll do some home shopping, but I like to, I'm old school. I like to go and see the thing that I want to buy. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not that pleasurable, you know, but I'm, I'm handling it and going to the gym. I just, I just purchased a house. So, and the main thing is so that I could build a gym. And before I even moved everything in, I went and purchased a whole bunch of things for my home gym because I don't like wearing a mask when I had to work out the gym. So wait, I was wait, building a gym. What, what did house. you get? What'd you get? I got cardio equipment. I have this specific cardio. It's a, um, it's an elliptical, but there's a, it's a certain brand and I had to purchase that one. Um, so I purchased that. It was, it was a good amount of money because I had to get the specific one. Um, and then I bought a whole bunch of weights, which before they used to be, you know, a dollar per pound you could get yeah, for right. a set of weights. Now yeah. it's three, $4 per pound. And wow. so I didn't buy everything I wanted because it's so much money, but you know, it, it, now in time I'm going to, but it, it's like that's the way I'm dealing with COVID. I'm 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 building everything in my house, um, so that's, that's well. You can tell you can tell from my body when it was a dollar a pound. I spent three bucks. Three dollars. So total it. three. Three dollars. <laughs> so before we talk about um, uh, the reason that we got together today to do some reminiscing, um, tell everybody what you're doing these days. Because well, you, you haven't been yeah. doing pro wrestling work. Yeah, I've been I, I've been in the corporate world for quite a while now, and um, due to COVID and different business things, um, now I have some more free time. <laughs> if you can catch my drift, so now I'm going to start to go back to what I was doing. Probably the last time you interviewed me, um, I was making wrestling gear for everybody. Right, and I was really good at it, but I stopped doing it because I got into into the corporate world. Well, because of COVID, I, I have to think of something else to do and jobs are not easy to get with what I had. So I'm going to go back to what I love doing and that, and I, I would love to do wrestling. Maybe I will, who knows, but right now I'm going to start making some gear. Um, I have some people that I still have to make gear for, I promised before, mm -hmm. and they're going to be my test dummies where I'm going to get back to what I was doing. Put me on the list. Put me on the list. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make you mask. I'm gonna Some make you a whole Willie outfit. Gear. Yes, you need new Willie gear. So, <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. So, right. yeah. So I'm, I have a couple people that um, you know, I worked with before that were my my, my customers all the time, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna make them some stuff just to get back in the habit. And once I feel that I'm confident enough to be able to put out a good product, I'm gonna advertise that I'm now making gear for everybody. And where it's going to be. Okay. So, uh, where, so you're about to ask where. So, I'm going to let I, everybody know the yeah. um, all social media. So, Facebook, which is you just search Nick Burke and you can get me. Um, Twitter, That's Nicholas B -E -R -K, Burke. B E R K, by the way, not B E R K. B -E -R -K. Right. Yeah. Nick, N I C K B E R K. Twitter is at Nicholas Burke, N I C H O L A S B E R K. Um, Instagram, I. Don't really use yet, but that is at real Nick Burke. Um, I believe it is. But oh, once I do all that, you, Facebook is where I'm going to advertise it the most, where you can find me on everything. So right. Facebook is my number one. So just look up Nick Burke and whoever has all the wrestling friends, that's me. 
All right, so changing topics completely now um, in a, a very shocking and sad news that we uh, saw several days ago, uh, the untimely death of someone who was uh, considered one of your best friends, Seabar. Yeah. yeah, tell us how you found this out and... Uh... Yeah, the, that, that early morning phone call from a friend that you usually talk to in the afternoons is one that you always dread getting. Uh, and that's what I got. Um, Robbie Marino, Robbie Illuminati uh, uh, from Blackout, he, um, he called me and, and told me that he got the call. And it, it took a while for him to actually get it out, but I, I, I knew something from somebody. Um, and, you know, it, it's just, it's sad when you get those calls. Sure. And we get too many of them. Yeah. We're all getting them a, a lot lately, especially um, in the wrestling business. It's it, it gets to be a thing where, you know, there's a lot of them, and then there's a small break, and then there's a lot of them again. There's something about our business that we're, I guess, we're so great that the good die young, um, or maybe we, we're on the road so much that that we're tired of being on the road. It's one or the other. We're both. Unfortunately, you know, it happened to my old tag team partner that I used to travel a lot with and had, had some great times with. So what, uh, when I mentioned his name, Z-Bar, and you talk about great times, what's one of the, what's one of those great times that you can remember? All right, so. Because you guys thing about us, core. Yeah, yeah, the weird thing about us was, um, it was, it was like having a little brother, but he wasn't the little brother. Like he was, like, he wouldn't listen to me like I was an older brother, but he acted as if he was the little immature brother. So we would do, our road trips were, were just hilarious. Um, man, um, it, it, it was really just the fun times of, of, of the whole road trip from when we would go down to North Carolina. Um, sometimes we would drive to, sometimes we, well, it's okay. So flying to North Carolina, he, he had this thing with his t-shirts. He would, he, I think it was the getoffended.com was the company that sponsored him. Okay. And he would all have all these offensive um, t-shirts. And I remember one time we get on to the plane and his shirt, his shirt said, who let the fuse, who lit the fuse on your tampon? We're about to go. And then all of a sudden somebody comes back and says that the pilot asked for you to, to wear a different shirt. Really? He didn't have one. So he's making a fuss about it. And we don't want to hold up the flight. We don't want to get kicked off. So he takes off his shirt and just sits there. He, he wasn't known for being in shape. And he was hairy. So he was bare-chested on the plane? Bare-chested, oh nipple rings, hairy, just sitting there. Is this what you want? Is this what you want? And, and then so finally, I took the shirt, flipped it inside out, put it on, and you couldn't read what it was on. And, and finally put on, we're, and we're fine. <laughs> he was the person who just had to be a jerk so that everybody can have a reaction. That's he could have been a nice guy, and everybody could have had like a good reaction. That's a but, great story. By the way, I want to let our viewers know that every time – Nick moves, he's moving his arms, he's on a virtual background. Oh. So when you're picking your arms up, you have no arms there. But I, didn't oh, I, I won't do that, stop I do it like this. That's fine, that works, that works. So what was his ring style uh, when you two tag teamed, et cetera? What was the best part of what he did in the ring? He reminded me a lot of Michael Hayes <clears throat> um, with how he liked to come out and strut. And he made fun of me because this is, a, this is another thing. Um, dating ourselves here, sometimes we would use tapes and CDs. And sometimes those tapes and CDs did not work with the, um, with the sound guy. So we would have oh, to pick something. Cassette tapes, right? Right. Well, I've got one here somewhere, but go ahead. Yeah, so he would play music that he knew I couldn't come out to and I wouldn't know what it was. And he would come out doing it every time it would be the same Michael Hayes strut. And when he would wrestle, he would take a little bit from everybody. He would take something from Ted DiBiase. He would take something from Big Van Vader. He would take something 
from, you know, from, from the Freebirds, you know, he would like a lot of the tag team stuff that he wanted to do was um, Freebird esque. It wasn't even um, like rock, like I would love to do rock and roll express stuff, but he didn't really want to do that. Like I, I threw a couple tag team moves, you know, spots to him, and he's like, ah, no, 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 let's do this. And and then I'd be watching some some Freebird stuff. I was like, that's where he got that spot from, and that's why he said no to Rock and Roll Express, but he wants to do the Freebird, like. You know, he wants me to be, you know, Ronnie Garvin or something. I don't know. But so, like, he, a lot of times he – I know he really liked um, – like, looking back, he really did like that old school. But he liked that hockey heel, which was a Michael Hayes type of heel. Yeah, and that's amazing. So he put, he put his own spin on things. Um, a lot of times trying to do things he probably shouldn't have been trying to do. And he would fall on his face with, like, moon, like the double jump moonsault out of the corner. You know, yeah. we jump on the second rope and then the top. He would oh, he would slip a lot, <laughs> and that's I, I. And sometimes when we would wrestle against each other, he would miss that spot, and I just laugh. And I'm, but and obviously I was I should have gotten up to go and fight back, but I would be laughing at him falling <laughs> that I didn't roll out of the way to go and and do a cover up. Yeah. You know, yeah. because he just he made me laugh because of the things he would say. He would curse. <laughs> That but that's I remember him. That's <laughs> something about him. Um, when we were when we were tagging, you know, you memorize spots. I I'm not good at memorizing spots. I'm old school. I like to call everything there. I know a little bit here, but he he would call the whole entire match, and he'd call the whole match to me from mm -hmm. the side of the ring. Wow. Um, because I wouldn't know what I'm doing, and I'd look at him, and he'd do he would do like a little something or say something, which would be like, okay, that's our spot. That's our spot, and that you know, because I knew all of our spots that we did, but I just didn't know what was coming next. And he, it would look like he's putting out his hand to to tag me, but he's calling the spot or my spot, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And the way he did it was so awesome. He was such a professional that way. That's a lot of things. That that's a lot of people don't realize about me how good he was with stuff like that. And um, he was he was really good with. Um, Putting people over and stuff like that, you know, making them shine. Yeah. So. When was the uh, when was the last time you you um, spoke to him? Um, last week, well, last week he texted me um, something, and I couldn't talk to him about it right away. And so I texted um, Johnny Cashmere and Brian Logan, asked him to hit him back up. But other than that, I'll, it was a long time. See, we we did. He was having some issues. And I told him that until he got himself better, um, like, and I'll be there for you when you need all the help, but you have to get the help. And as long as I see you going to get the help, I'll, I'll be in your life. And, and he, he didn't go and get the help that he needed, unfortunately, yeah. um, at that time. So we, it's, it's been, I think, uh, it definitely it hasn't been six months, but maybe about five or so that we actually interacted, you know, hung out and talked and, and everything. But, um, you know, I, this, he, was, he was going through a rough time because he loved wrestling. Wrestling was what he, what he loved. And the fact that he didn't have it, he was going through some rough times. But I know he was going to a doctor's appointments and he was on medication to get himself better and to be better. And unfortunately, um, you know, what happened, it happened. It just, I, I feel terrible, but I, I, last time I talked to him, he, he didn't want the help. And from what I understand, he got that help, and I, I found out now. Yeah, yeah. Um, at the time we're taping this, we don't know anything what officially happened. But if if you could, if he's looking down from where he is and he's listening to you, what would you say to him? Uh, what I what I would always say to him um, before is, I, I love you, man. Um, that's that's what I would say to him. Like, he, I mean, I know that he knew that I loved him. Um, our last exchange. He, he got the message. He, I, you know, he knows, like, I couldn't call him, but he knows that I love him. Um, and I want the, and I want him to, to be happy and at peace. And, you know, it's, it's sad that, um, you know, when, when you start to think of things that you didn't say and, you know, things I had in the future for, for us to do, yeah, it, it sucks that like, I didn't get to tell him, what I had planned. It sucks that Robbie Marino didn't get to tell him 
things that he had planned. Like we have these things that were planned for Barr, um, and and we just didn't tell him yet because things weren't set up for it to happen and 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 to give him these presence or these involvement that he's going to have and unfortunately he's he's not able to reap those benefits yeah. but yeah. he's not sad anymore and i'm happy that he's not sad anymore just wish that i was able to be here with him to witness that not being sad anymore all right thank you nick burke thank you um uh, down here for the after chat this is bill after and Nick Burke, and uh, remembering Z-Bar.